Welcome board gamers to a Wooden Spoon Warriors video. My name's Ben and today I'm going to uh, do a bit of a hobby vlog. Um, we're just going to look at some of the stuff I've been working on, uh, some of the stuff I'm going to be working on, uh, I'll throw up a few pictures of some of the stuff I've just painted in the last couple of days um, and yeah we're going to look at some of the paints I've used and we'll see where we go from there. Okay so this is what I've spent the last three nights working on uh, my plastic fellowship of the ring um, like I said I've just straightforward base coated and washed same basic method as before just used a variety in uh, selection of colors uh, and sort of tried to max match the box art where I can with the colors I've got available I haven't got the widest selection I don't have the full selection of Citadel paints so I, I've done the best to, to match it in where I can uh, I've owned this fellowship for six years, hadn't painted it uh, before. I've got the original metal fellowship still in box downstairs that needs some attention as well. Um, and obviously we've got the Quest of the Ring Bearer supplement book coming up for Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game in the near future. I thought it best uh, at about time that I got this painted. Um, so like I said, quick, cheap and nasty, uh, tabletop standard paint job. Uh, for the fellowships, that's what I've been working on uh, for the goods. And then, for the evil models, I've been working on... So, earlier on when I was searching through for some different models to get my Khazad Guard, I uh, found Shark Eat and Worm. I had sat in box. Again, it's another one I've had for years. They were already primed uh, and the bases were already done. So it was just a quick, quick, uh, quick and cheerful uh, paint job. Um, as you can probably see, Sharky there is not fully matching uh, the the box art. Um, I've gone for a sort of more grey and I made it a darker, dingier, dingier colour than sort of the bright creams, uh, the warmer cream he's got in uh, in the box art and the worm tongue. I'm quite a fan of the model, to be fair. Again, very straightforward. Only four or five colours. Uh, and a nice dark normal wash over makes it very grimy. Uh, I could potentially use it in uh, part of my Isengard army uh, as a Saruman and Worm. I do have other variations. I don't have the new plastic ones yet. I do have the uh, the old metal mounted Saruman uh, and a Grimer Worm Tongue. Um, so I'll be potentially using these or I could use them in battle companies. Uh, if I have a Manish caster at any point or a mage I can use this model. And I quite like it. It's uh, it's a nice little sculpt. Um, so I've been working on that, getting those done and dusted. And here's one that I'm quite pleased with. You can't really see it, so I have to move the camera. Uh, let's see. So one I've been working on is a uh, Witch King foot and mounted. So the, the the foot version I've had for a long time. The mounted version I got a few months back, uh, and he had lost a sword uh, so the, the top of his sword had actually snapped off on eBay and he was mislabeled as a just a generic wraith um, so I managed to pick him up for about eight pounds uh, a few months ago on eBay so I'm quite pleased with that and all I've done is quick and nasty hand swap so I had a spare Shadow Lord model who's now an amputee quickly Trimmed that off, trimmed off the hand, the existing hand of the Witch King, and slapped the uh, the sword hand from the Shadow Lord on. Obviously, it's not the big two-handed sword uh, that he normally that pose normally carries. However, I don't think, unless you own the model specifically or look at it too hard, it's 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 not particularly easy to tell that it's a very quick, uh, cheap and cheerful conversion uh, for my Angmar army. So yeah, very straightforward again. Just a bad and black base, um, then a lead belcher for all the metal parts. Um, the horse got a rhinox hide, and then eschen grey for the straps, and then a, a quick uh, wash of non oil. Just like I said, cheap and nasty, grubby, grimy looking model. Gets it to tabletop standard, I can get it on the table and start playing some games with it to slot in nicely to my Angmar. I prefer this version to the the crown uh, version of the Witch King 
the armoured version where he's at the Pelennor. So this fits a nice more more theme like into my Angmar army where he hasn't at that stage yet. So that's what I've been working on so far. Okay, so these are my uh, Khazad that I'm working on for my Khazad list. So this is the repaint. The models on the left, as you can see, uh, I painted about 12 years ago um, when I was about 17. Uh, as you can see, it's a very basic, very basic paint job. Standard block colours in, no wash, and the base is very basic. Um, this is my current chosen scheme. So these three were tester models, uh, and these are the ones I'm going to be. This is the scheme that I'm going to be continuing on throughout my army. Um, so I've got the Khazad Guard, which are going to be my Hearth Guard, Durin's Warband. So uh, the metals on them, uh, well, so the metals, Lead Belcher, all Citadel base paints, uh, Lead Belcher, and then Liberated Gold for the gold parts. And that's after I have primed the whole model with uh, a bad and black. And then for the base, uh, put a layer of Steel Legion Drab. Followed by that, a quick layer of PVA. And then some grit, grit and sand. And once that has dried, I then apply a base layer onto the base of dry bark. Followed by a dry brush of Dawnstone. Okay, and then like I said, with the uh, metal, once I've done the metals, and then move on to the cloth. Base layer of Nagaroth Knight, and this is the only highlight I do on the model, is Jean Steeler Purple. I'm not particularly accomplished painter, uh, not the likes of um, Stuart Mack from Miniature Realm Studios. I don't tend to do much highlighting. I like my models to be dark and grimy, so I tend to put just a base layer on and then either a Nuln Oil or an Agrax Earthshade wash, keep the models dark, dark and grimy, get them on the table. It gives it a more natural, darker feel to me that the Lord of the Rings uh, and the Hobbit series gives. They're not, there's not too many bright and powerful colours, it's very dark, especially sort of Helm's Deep and, and Moria, which is my favourite parts of the film, they're very dark uh, and dingy sections of the films. Uh, so yeah, that's that's why I tend to, to uh, keep the models nice and dark. Um, so then from the flesh tones, I use Kisler Flesh, and then we use a combination of Gorthor Brown, Deanville Brown, uh, Bane Blade Brown, and Rhinox Hide, all for the, the leather uh, parts, the axe half, the boots, any sort of belts, uh, satchels, all that sort of thing. And then after that, shades to get a right and flesh shade over the top, followed by a non oil. And yeah, so not too bad. I'm, I'm quite pleased with how they uh, turned out for a test. So that's the original. And that's not what we're looking at. So I've done the first three of my new scheme. So the old one there. And the new one. So I'm much happier with this one than the current one. I've got about 18 uh, Khazad Guard in total. From back in the days when you used to buy a blister of three for about five pounds. I used to buy those from um, a games workshop in Cheltenham uh, in three blister packs uh, when they had the two two separate varieties, so different variants. Uh, and as you can see in the back, I've got another six uh, Khazad Guard uh, Prime Black uh, just a thin coat over the top of the pre-existing paint job. I'm not interested in stripping. Um, and they're ready to go. So like I said, I've got a few more uh, ready to get done. I've got about 18 in total to do. So this should take me to a uh, full wall band of 12 uh, once I've cracked on with that. So that's what I'm, uh, I've got currently working on uh, at the moment. And I'll show you now a few models that I've already uh, completed.
So guys, that's um, what I've been working on the last few days uh, and what I've got coming up. So I'm going to start cracking on with those Khazad Guard, try and get those done uh, as quickly as possible. Um, I've still got the full, I've got a full army to repaint, so one to one and a half thousand points worth of Khazadum Dwarves to repaint and heroes. Um, so I'm going to get cracked on with those as best I can over the next few weeks. Um, when I've got some progress, I'll um, do another vlog. Um, I've got a couple of cave trolls and I'm planning to start building a Barlin's Tomb, basic simple Barlin's Tomb, um, a bit of scenery, terrain, uh, to play the scenario because I've never, never played that scenario before and with the Quest of Fellowship, Quest of the Ring Bearer coming up uh, in the coming months, it's uh, something I'd like to do now that I've got the Fellowship painted up, I can start looking to play some more narrative scenarios. Um, down at the gaming club, well, obviously when that reopens, once the current apocalypse has sorted itself out. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you if you like this and you want to see more of this, um, drop us a comment, like the video, subscribe, um, share it through various social media platforms. Great British Hobbit League. Um, we have our local uh, gaming group, um, Gloucestershire Hobbit League. Uh, there is a Facebook group out there. I'm not sure if we're going to sort ourselves out a social media page as of yet. Um, but if you like it and you want to see more uh, hobby vlogs, uh, then yeah, just drop us a comment and, uh, and let us know. Uh, until next time, um, see you soon. Bye.